This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and the Matram Gym today with a, a little bit of a surprise guest but Paddy messaged me and I thought you know what I'm up for that interview I knew that you had a bit of boxing in you. Um, Liam Rudin how are you mate? I'm, I'm good bro I'm good how are you? I'm good thank you bro I'm good. Um, what brings you here firstly I suppose let's start just from the roots from the core beginnings how come you're here in the Matram Gym in Essex and where did it all begin for you? Well obviously originally from Wales um, but I box, you know, mostly well, since about 13 years of age, and uh, you know, it took us here at some points, not so serious at other points, and I moved to Essex then uh, about 18 months ago after Love Island, and uh, yeah, I wanted to carry on the boxing, and they brought me to the mushroom gym. I got in touch with Joe Cordina, you know, me and Joe, we, we're both, both from Wales, and uh, he set me up with Kevin Mitchell, and so I've um, been training with Kevin now for about about 16 months, and. Um, yeah, it's been going great, really well. How have you found that? And obviously you say it's been great, but I imagine coming from Love Island and then I imagine all the uh, commitments you have to do after that in terms of like appearances and, and everything. Uh, how did you find the transition into moving around here and then being back in the gym every day? It was heavy. It was, it was a lot. You know, I went from being a bricklayer in Wales and um, you know, having everyone around me. To all of a sudden, I live in Essex. You know, it's somewhere I'm not used to. Not really doing bricklaying bricklay anymore, it's more of a different career. And um, yeah. now I'm finding myself in a mushroom gym. Yeah. You know, I've some of the boys who I see here, I've, I've watched since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I was, was a big fan of Kevin when I was younger. And now, now I'll be under, under him training. It was, uh, it was crazy, but I'm um, loving it. You know, it took some while to get adjusted, living in Essex, but I'm loving it now. And uh, yeah, things are well. What's the plan for you moving forward then? Because George sort of spoke about misfits and obviously we've got that going on, but um, I imagine just sort of looking you at your frame, it might be sort of fairly hard to get fights or get someone to take fights. I probably I wouldn't want to take a fight against you, to be honest. Um, and you've clearly already got the boxing pedigree. Do you sort of see a potential look down the pro route or do you want to maybe stick in the sort of influencer side? I mean, what, what picks your fancy on that one? Uh, look, I love boxing. I always have loved boxing. It's my number one sport. And, um, yeah, I feel like all the fundament fundamentals there to be, you know, a decent boxer. And, you know, like I said, I've trained for, for years now. And I'm in the best environment possible. You know, and the Kevin, Tony, I've got some great pros on me. I've got Dempsey, the tower next to me here. I can learn a thing or two off him. And, um, but yeah, going forward, I would like to compete. And uh, if I got to go down a Misfits route, which, are, you know, seems like a great opportunity, and uh, yeah, I think I'd you know, definitely have to give it a go. And uh, you know, if I get my foot in the door then, and it can always lead to other things, depending, okay. if, the first, depending if the first two fights go yeah. well. I was going to say also, age is on your side as well. I mean, we were just having a chat off camera, and I'll sort of speak to Dempsey about it as well. But obviously, what did he say? He started at 24 or something, and you're 23 now. So age is definitely on your side with things. Um, I suppose it's sort of a, a see where things take you with misfits. Um, Obviously, you were there this weekend, I was as well. Uh, absolutely packed from the first fight to the last fight, which we don't always see in the pros. Um, what did you make of it all, and could you see yourself in that environment? Look, I think the event was brilliant. I think it was like 12,500 people there. It was packed out, and you know, I think that what they're doing for the boxing is great. Um, you know, times are evolving, and it's bringing a whole different audience into, into boxing. You've got some kids who never thought of sport boxing, now are now boxing fans, who I think is great. And uh, the fights were entertaining, some weren't so entertaining, but some, you know, most of them were. And uh, like you said, from the first um, fight to the last fight, the, the crowd was packed out. And um, yeah, some of these boys are confident boys, you know, the, from the ring walks in, they, you know, they seem well up for it. And, uh, you know, I've, I think that's something I could do, 100%. JJ KSI sort of uh, mentioned about hopefully getting misfits almost a little bit like the WWE. Obviously the difference is, you know, true, real fighting as opposed to it all being scripted and stuff. But I suppose there is that element that it brings. Uh, Pineda's walk out, for example, you know, half the people uh, didn't know who he was before he fought KSI, became a bit of a meme and then comes out to The Undertaker and 14,000 people who he couldn't even speak a word of English to any of them, cheering his name, bombing him for selfies. So it's like, it is a real experience, isn't it? 100%, 100%. You know, I've seen that Undertaker, and I, to be honest with you, I, I didn't know some of the fighters were, you know, but like, yeah, so he came out and everybody was going crazy for this guy. I, was, I didn't know I didn't know who he was. Yeah, but, um, you know, he put on a show and he actually won his fight, I think, didn't he? So, um, look, I think it's just a great, it's, you know, it's great for the sport and, you know, with the WWE sort of roots, I'm not sure about that. 
Um, like, if I want to go down the road, I just want to box and, you know, I want to take it 100% seriously. And, uh, like, I think these guys are taking it seriously. They just see it as almost like uh, the selling point, like WWE. Obviously, still is boxing, but the way I think they're obviously pushing their personas and, and I think when I've spoke to Mam's KSI's manager he's always said like I'm happy if you're an ex Love Islander ex or, or TikTok or YouTube or content creator but I want you to still be like sort of enticing the fans and doing that yeah. sort of thing that, that draws them in well they want it to be fun there. I've seen yeah, that yeah, the salt pop he does his thing he yeah, yeah. licks his lips and he does his hands yeah. like that <laughs> so yeah that's, it's bringing all that side into it and uh but yeah, I think it's just good fun as well. And uh, but I can see the route they're going down, yeah. and it's definitely working. You know, it's drawing attraction in. You know, I think it's the was it the fourth, fourth yeah, event they've done, yeah. and Phil Stadium at Wem Wembley Arena is is pretty impressive, and pay per view as well all over the world. It was good. Do you have any names? I know it's early days, and you're only sort of just planning. But are there any? Is there anyone that you think that you'd sort of like to get in the ring with? Give a little bit of a, a left and right round the ring for a couple of rounds. Ah, uh, to be honest, though, like. Uh, what weight uh, would, would they be my weight? Yeah, well, I suppose or, or somewhere around. I suppose give or take ten pounds what you'd fight at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I saw the, probably the biggest boys were there. It was probably uh, uh, Josh uh, Brackner, yeah, yeah. uh, Sol Papi, um, and they seem you know they seem like the decent boys. So you know a bit of training, good camp, and me and I'd be ready to uh, take them on. I think. Ready for all the smoke, yeah. I'm ready for all the smoke, bro. I'm ready for it. Um, look, I suppose let's talk about being in this gym and being around all the pros. First, Joe Cordina, fellow Welshman. Um, Former IBF champion, it feels a bit weird saying that, obviously stripped because of uh, the injury to his hand, but coming back this year, done an in-depth with him uh, over Christmas about the sort of uh, Rakimov fight, looking forward to become a two-time undefeated world champion, um, must be buzzing for him. 100%, you know, I was there when he won the belt in Cardiff and the roof came down, you know, it was unbelievable. A second round knockout and honestly, it, the crowd erupted. And Cardiff's our hometown as well, so for him to do it in that fashion, back at home, was unbelievable. And he gets to do it again now in, uh, is it May? Was it yes, April yes, or May? Uh, I think end of April, end of April. Matt. He gets to do it all over again, so yeah. I'll be there. I'm sure my boys from back yeah. home will be there as well. And I'm just buzzing for Joe, the top lad, and uh, very, very skillful. I think the world's just, you know, it was on the up. <laughs> you know, he had a little hiccup, but um, he's going to get it back. You know, he's, he's, he's very, very talented. And then just a word on obviously the rest of the gym. I mean, there's so much talent here. Obviously, Dempsey here, George and Maisie, who are fantastic young pros. Felix, Jordan Thompson's now in here. Um, I'll maybe see Connor's return sometime soon. Um, just a gym of absolute talent. And I suppose when you're around people like that, it just gives you the fuel to and the desire to, I suppose, be on that level when you're training around them. It's just incredible. 100%. You know, I got my mates back home in Wales, are big boxing fans. And when I remind them I train in the gym with these boys, it's just like, you know, they find it hard to get their head around, you know? Like, you know, you got John Ryder this year, you hope you're going for the Canelo fight. Um, you know, you got Felix, and these, these boys have fallen for years. And, you know, it's just to train this gym, is, I can't be asked to be better in a better environment. Like I said, you got Joe's and Maisie coming up as well. It's brilliant. Hopefully, big news with Dempsey this year. I say, maybe, maybe Anthony Joshua, we're hoping potentially. Fingers crossed. In the tower, I think he can pull it off. But even for me now, you know, you've got Craig Richards as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. These boys are a bit bigger. I can learn a thing, well, I can learn a lot of, uh, of Craig and Dempsey. So, um, yeah, I couldn't be happy to be here. Well, Liam, well articulated. I think nice to sort of see you and uh, obviously taking it very seriously when you're around the people that you are. Just a final message. What can we expect? A fight sometime maybe back end of 2023 are we looking at? I mean, how quickly do we want to get in the ring? Well, I think in summer 2023 okay. and I'll be ready. Final. What can we expect from you? Is it? Is it? Are you a fierce puncher? Is it sort of tenacity? You know, what? Are, what are we ready to expect? Um, to be honest, with you, I'm more of a. I've never had really many fights before. You know, it's like, you know, I'm humble as they come. But when I'm in the ring, you know, I flick that switch and I'm ready to go. Take it as it comes, Liam. Thank you very much for speaking to us at Boxing Social.